So some of you may recognize this plane from a video that I made almost two years ago now. Uh, I think it was about 21 months ago. Um, and it's a vertical takeoff and landing plane, which I actually built for my university dissertation. Now, I had originally planned to build it in my spare time and then release the CAD files uh, for it online for free so that you could build your own. But because I ended up integrating it with my university degree, I didn't really want to be sharing uh, the files online for any kind of plagiarism or copyright issues. So now that I've finished my degree and that's all over, I am now building a new vertical takeoff and landing plane. It's going to be essentially the same plane uh, with two motors on the wingtips, but I'm going to make quite a few big improvements to the plane. Now there are a few issues with this plane, uh, mainly being the weight of the plane and also the lack of a proper aerofoil on the wing due to it just being a folded bit of foam board over an aluminium spar. Now also the aluminium spar adds quite a lot of weight uh, quite spread out from the center of mass, which means the plane has a large moment of inertia, which essentially means the plane is really hard to roll or to loop because there's a lot of uh, mass out from the center of mass. You want to keep everything as central as possible so that it rolls and loops really quickly. Now my plan for this next vertical takeoff plane is to utilize the 3D printed fuselage that I built in my last video, uh, which you can go watch. I'll link it down in the description below. It's basically how I designed and 3D printed this fuselage. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hop back onto my computer and show you the design of this new vertical takeoff plane. So here is the design that I made of the vertical takeoff plane in Fusion 360. And if you look at it very briefly, it looks quite similar to the old vertical takeoff plane. However, instead of running aluminium spars, which uh, are quite heavy, it's now running carbon fiber uh, cylindrical spars, which are significantly lighter than the aluminium ones. And you may also notice that there's not a really heavy tilt mechanism uh, on each wingtip for the motor. The motors are instead clamped to this single uh, carbon fiber spar. And if I just quickly remove the wing model, uh, you should be able to see that this spar goes all the way through the wing and it's actually one single spar. Now, this does have some compromises. Uh, for example, when it hovers, uh, the old plane uh, for your control, which is this axis, it would rotate the motors individually to turn it. However, because these are locked to one single spar, they can only rotate together. So I won't have your axis control during a hover. However, what I'm hoping is that with a slight headwind, um, I can get away with using uh, a physical rudder, an actual turning rudder at the rear, uh, which will therefore turn the plane slightly. The yaw control isn't a major issue because you mainly want to be facing into the wind anyway during a hover, uh, so that when you transition, it doesn't have to uh, go as fast to create the same amount of lift, same way as regular planes take off and land into the wind. Now you may also notice that I have designed a 3D printed uh, wing ribs, uh, and this gives the, well it should give the wing a bit more of an airfall shape. Um, I'm not sure of what airfall I chose for these. I think it was a NACA, 2412 or something like that. I'll post it on the screen uh, below. Uh, but hopefully this should also improve the amount of lift produced during forward flight. So it flies just a bit better um, when it's you know a regular plane. Uh, also, because this carbon fiber wing spar, um, the ones that I buy come in one meter sections. Uh, the wingspan is slightly shorter uh, to make space for the propellers. The old vertical takeoff plane had a one meter wingspan, and this is going to have um, an 80 centimeter wingspan. So 800 millimeters rather than 1000 millimeters. But I'm hoping that the weight saving is uh, greater in terms of you know the lift produce as well. So this is the design that I've come up with. Um, there are a few other aspects to it. For example, there I'm running smaller motors this time, uh, more um, high quality motors, which are designed for racing drones, so their power to weight also uh, has improved since the previous motors I was using. Um, but aside from that, I think I've probably covered most of the details. Uh, so let's 3D print all the parts and uh, get on with the build.
So here is the almost finished plane. It's not quite finished yet. I still need to add some ailerons to it as well as configure all the electronics. I'm currently working on an Arduino based uh, mixing system to uh, go in series with a flight controller to do all of the controls for the motor thrust and also the tilt in a hover. Uh, which I'll be going through in my next video because uh, I didn't really want to just stuff it in this plane and show you it flying. I want to go through how I've uh, written the code for it and stuff like that. Now let's check how much this thing weighs. The old plane was 1060 grams. So uh, let's just get the scales out. I think I'm going to have to put this on the floor and then balance it on its nose. So as I mentioned, this has a slightly smaller wing. Hopefully the weight saving is greater than the loss in wing area. So the old plane was 1060 grams and this is 492 grams. That's a pretty good weight saving. And not only that, the battery that I'm going to be using in this is 20 grams lighter than the battery I used in the old one. So the weight saving is quite huge. Now, I'm really looking forward to test fly this plane. Unfortunately, it's going to have to wait to the next video, uh, as I mentioned. Um, what I've found with uh, writing Arduino code, uh, because I'm very new to code, I'm more mechanically minded for this stuff, uh, I ended up writing code for four days straight, and it felt like I hadn't really got anywhere. So that's quite um, interesting. It's, uh, it's quite difficult to show that kind of effort in a video when, you know, this plane probably took less effort to build than to write the code for this flight controller but the code doesn't really convey much effort if that makes sense uh, anyway I'll be going through that next video so if you enjoyed this video please give a thumbs up if you want to see this plane fly then please click subscribe down below uh, hopefully I'll be able to get it flying next week uh, if not uh, maybe the week after depending on weather um, and I need to say a huge, huge thanks to all of my patrons for supporting me. You guys make these projects and videos possible. And I wouldn't be able to put the time and effort into these 3D printer files uh, to release them online without you Patreon supporters. So if you wish to uh, download all of my files and everything off of Thingiverse for free, it would be greatly appreciated if you could support me on Patreon as well. Thanks once again for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.